Is this just the beginning? So yesterday, a lot of you know, New York City had an earthquake or experienced an earthquake. And the epicenter of this earthquake was in Jersey, which was Lebanon, New Jersey, to be exact. And it was recorded at a 4.8 magnitude. When it happened, I remember sitting in my chair and the chair started rocking, going up and down. I'm like, and I'm thinking a truck hit the beam downstairs because I live over a highway. I also live on the 21st floor. So, but then I noticed that the building was shaking as well and the chair. And I'm like, uh oh. And as soon as I thought, this is a, my wife calls and she calls crying because she lives downtown. So she's like, you know, she's scared and all this other stuff, calm her down. And then she's like, I can't believe that happened. With that, I get numerous texts and notifications about an earthquake. So being that this wasn't that bad, it was possibly, it wasn't possibly, it was one of the strongest earthquakes we've seen in about 140 years. The last one was 140 years ago. So last year, sorry, earlier this year, we experienced a smaller earthquake as well. I think it was a two point something. I remember that light rumbling, and then there was one last year, and then there was a bigger one about a few years back. I think it was 2017 or 11. I can't remember which one. But anyway, this one was, uh, this one got a lot of people nervous. And even me sitting at home, once I realized it was an earthquake, I went into like automatic, like prepared mode, and I was like, what do I do next? And I'm thinking, run to the hallway, down the stairs and try to get into the staircase because I am 21 flights above the ground. And I'm gonna to get to why you should run into the staircase a little later. But anyway, but it, 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 it ended a second sooner, the wife called and then everything was good. Now, this video, we're gonna, it's gonna be real quick because I'm gonna talk about a couple of tips and things you should do. Now, the other question is, is this the beginning? Are there going to be more? I think yes. Being that it seems like the frequencies of earthquakes in New York City or earthquakes being felt in New York City are becoming a little more frequent. Keep in mind, I grew up in the city 46 years. As a kid, we might have experienced one. In the last five, six years, we've experienced three or four. With the, late, the one before this one being in January of this year. So, and then this one being the strongest, and they're around the same area in New Jersey. So, of course, guys, I think we're going to see more, and we are undoubtedly going to see a bigger one. Now, the episode is probably not going to be here, but anything over a five or six here in New York City, or being felt here in New York City, is going to have a lot of structural damages throughout the entire city. I would even assume that a lot of buildings are going to be on their asses. A lot of these buildings are old. They're late 1800s, early 1900 buildings. And then you have townhouses and Queen Anne's that are still standing that were built in the 18, mid 1800s and a little earlier than that. So with that, guys, we have a lot of old ass building here and we have a lot of new construction here as well. A lot of the buildings are not great for earthquake. So that's that has to be understood. Being that they're not rated for that if this is not california they're not rated for that i think they are rated for a certain amount of vibration but nothing i'm going to assume nothing over a five pointer or six pointer is going to save a lot of these buildings in fact we're probably going to lose a large majority of buildings if we get anything over six or seven and if that happens guys obviously new york is screwed this is going to be one giant graveyard because millions of people will be dead if anything like that happens. Hell, if the new Madrid fault snaps and goes, we're going to feel it up here. And I think we're going to feel a, a decent size magnitude up here as well. That'll probably still cause buildings to fall and a lot of structural damage. And even if the building doesn't collapse and you get out of it, your building might be damaged so badly you won't be able to get inside. Now, there's not enough engineers to rate all of these buildings to see which is structurally sound and which is not, which is going to create a bigger problem. The other problem is the bridges collapse, who's going to come and save people in Manhattan? Not a lot of people, because if the bridges and tunnels collapse, everything's going to be done by boat. That's going to complicate matters even more. And in fact, if that happens, New York City would have to be evacuated. There is no way to bring people over here and not so much save us, but defeat us and everything else. Everybody would have to evacuate New York City. You couldn't bring everything on here. You would bring some relief, relief 
resources here, but the majority of people are going to have to leave. And the only rescue is going to be done by firefighters and cops that are stuck here on Manhattan. Now, clearly, guys, there are, if I'm not mistaken, 30-something bridges or 20-something bridges that connect New York City to other boroughs and New Jersey right across the way. So if all of those collapse because there's a big earthquake, that's going to be a problem. And people are going to be trapped on here. And again, the only way off is an evacuation. And that evacuation could take weeks. Not hours, not days, weeks. There are, on this rock, Manhattan, I think there's 9 million people, a little more than that, on this rock alone. Forget about the entire borough of New York of New York City. Uh, all boroughs of New York City, sorry. You still have the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and that armpit called Staten Island that... I don't know why it's even part of us. It should be part of Jersey. But that's another discussion for another day. So, guys, the tips are, if, first of all, have food and water. That goes without saying. Basic prepper shit. But if you live in a high-rise, you live in a building taller than, let's say, five stories. And it depends on the design of the stairway, too. That's the other thing I have to go over. You're going to want to make your way to the stairway if you're in a high-rise. Let's put it like that. If you're in a high-rise make your way to the stairway, you have a slightly better chance of surviving a stairway or by an elevator bank than you do in your apartment. Now, I say high-rise because there are certain buildings, like even tenements, which are anywhere between five to maybe seven stories, they have wider staircases, which, will, which once they collapse into each other, you're dead. And they don't create crevices and protection bubbles, if you will, as a regular staircase like these do. Now, even in this, the higher up you are, the more in danger you are. You want to try to get to a lower floor. So don't just run into the staircase and stop. Try to get as low as you possibly can before the building collapses on you. That is paramount. I learned that from my father, who's a Port Authority cop, and then obviously when the trade center happened, the two cops that survived, they talked about how they headed over to the elevator banks, and that's how they survived. So again, Elevated banks, staircases, where you want to head into. If you are outside, do not look up and watch things come down on you. What you want to do is try to get away from that building if you can, unless you're in the middle of the business district. Other than that, you're going to have to lay down, buy a car, put your hands over your head, and pray for the best. That's the best you can do. If you can get out to an open field because you're like by Central Park, for example, take flight and head into the park your park is going to heading into the park is going to be a way better chance than standing by buildings obviously the only thing you might have to contend with is a branch maybe a light pole and a, maybe a tree maybe but if you head into the park try to head to the most open area you could if you are by a parking lot head to the parking lot go there and try to get to the center part of the parking lot that you possibly can go to open areas that you possibly can if you're in the subway that's a tough one because you could stay in the subway and you would probably be better off in the subway being that subways are rated for heavy vibrations because of the train so and the, the amount of steel beams and stuff that that actually protect train tunnels you'll do better in the train station as well so if you can get to the train station i would say run in there before laying on the ground by a car but if you're not by a train station you're not by a park you're not by an open area do yourself a favor Lie as close as you can to the car, not underneath the car, but by the car, and cover your head and pray for the best. Also, have a bug out bag. You could be living in your building. You could survive that first wave of uh, earthquakes, and your building might be damaged, and you might have nowhere to go. Your bug out bag is going to afford you to pitch a tent again in a park or somewhere where it's open. Pitch a tent there for a day or two until you can figure out what you're going to do, and then move from there. A bug out bag is important, guys. Food, water in your apartment is going to be important. If there's no structural damage to your apartment or your home or your house, whatever it is, food and water is going to be a great deal because the power is probably undoubtedly going to go out. You're going to need a backup power source. So one of those solar generators, which is going to go a long way and something like that, or a generator, something to have backup power because you're definitely going to lose it. Communication might be knocked out. So I don't know what you would do with that unless you have a ham radio. There's not much you could do with communications once it's knocked out in the city. So try to come up with another way to make phone calls. You're probably going to have to have a landline, again, if your building or apartment is still standing, or you can actually go in it. So just keep that in mind, guys, that 
With an earthquake, there's a lot of variables. There's also broken sewage pipes, there's broken gas mains, there's down power lines that you're gonna to have to contend with. All of these things in the city, you're actually gonna to have to contend with. So you're going to, when you come outside, make sure, first of all, there's nothing about to fall in your head. Make sure that there's no gas leaks in the area. If there is, leave the area altogether. Don't stick around. And if you see down power lines, stay the hell away from it. Don't cross over it. Don't try to get close to see what it is. Back away and go in the opposite direction. These are crude tips because there are too many variables with the earthquake in New York City. And there's too many things that can happen. And there are too many things that might not happen. So, again, I'm just giving you crude tips. That's all it is. Anyway, guys, other than that, this is The Angry Prepper. Thank you for watching.